Hello everyone and welcome to another video from our channel, Who Died Today America? In this video, we will be bringing you a list of notable celebrities who have passed away today, June 17th, and in the last few days. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. Number 12, Dan Lardner, the acclaimed singer and guitarist of the indie rock band QTY, has tragically passed away. The details surrounding his death, confirmed on June 15, 2023, have not yet been disclosed. Lardner along with Alex Nemitz, guitar vocals, Peter Bowman, bass, and Alan Uke, drums, formed QTY in 2014. The New York-based group was promptly signed to Dirty Hit Records, and they released their self-titled debut album in 2017, in collaboration with prestigious producer Bernard Butler, a former member of Suede. Their debut album positioned QTY as one of the most exciting new bands coming out of New York, according to NME in 2017, who subsequently featured them on the NME 100 list in 2018. The band's distinctive sound, characterized by catchy guitar pop, became a notable contribution to New York's rich musical landscape. Lardner's authentic songwriting and relatable lyrics, combined with the band's unique sound, made an indelible impact on the world of indie rock. Despite admiring musicians such as Bowie, Lardner had expressed a desire to be recognized for his lyrical talents, and he achieved this aim. His close relationship with Evan Dando, the frontman of the Lemonheads, demonstrates the kind of camaraderie in the music industry that transcends professional boundaries. His recent role as a guest of honor during the Psychedelic Furs US tour reflects the deep respect and admiration his peers had for him. Dan Lardner's untimely passing is a significant loss to the music industry. His vibrant spirit, musical talents, and dedication to authentic lyrics will continue to resonate with fans and fellow musicians alike. His anticipated second album, now an unfinished symphony, serves as a poignant reminder of an artist taken from us too soon. Number 11. Daniel Ellsberg, famed Pentagon Papers whistleblower, passed away at 92 from pancreatic cancer on June 16, 2023. Born on April 7, 1931, in Chicago, Ellsberg gained global recognition as a U.S. government analyst in the 1970s when he exposed classified documents known as the Pentagon Papers, revealing that the American government was aware that the Vietnam War was unwinnable. Educated at Harvard and Cambridge, Ellsberg served in the U.S. Marine Corps in the 1950s before transitioning to a civilian role as an analyst for the Defense Department during the Vietnam War. His role evolved into becoming a prominent voice against wrongful U.S. interventions and an advocate for patriotic whistleblowing. Over the years, his efforts shaped the public opinion towards war and its associated decisions. Ellsberg was put on trial in 1973 for espionage, conspiracy, and theft of government property, but the charges, which could have led to a 115-year sentence, were dismissed due to severe governmental misconduct, including an illegal office break-in. This scandal eventually contributed to President Nixon's resignation in 1974. Ellsberg also published four books, including the autobiographical Secrets, a memoir of Vietnam and the Pentagon Papers, and The Doomsday Machine, Confessions of a Nuclear War Planner. In the face of his illness, he lived his last months with dignity, surrounded by loved ones and enjoying his favorite meals and films. His death is a significant loss to the country, with tributes pouring in to celebrate his bravery, patriotism, and commitment to truth. He is survived by his wife, Patricia Marks Ellsberg, two sons and a daughter. His legacy continues in the whistleblowing community as he served as a vocal defender of individuals such as Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange, and Edward Snowden, who followed in his courageous footsteps. Number 10. Brett Hadley, a celebrated actor most recognized for his role as police detective Carl Williams in the long-running soap opera The Young and the Restless, died at the age of 92 on June 15, 2023. Known for his potent character development and compelling performances, 
Adley's portrayal of Detective Williams from 1980 to 1990, and then again in 1998 and 1999, spanned an impressive 216 episodes, captivating audiences worldwide. In his compelling portrayal, Carl Williams, an integral character to the storyline, fathered another enduring character, Paul Williams, a private investigator played by Doug Davidson. This dynamic father-son relationship brought a familial depth to the series' dramatic plot. Hadley's acting repertoire was far from limited to his standout role in The Young and the Restless. He showcased his acting prowess in other popular TV series such as Room 222, The FBI, The Waltons, Marcus Welby, Maryland, The Incredible Hulk, and Beauty and the Beast. His cinematic contributions were also noteworthy, featuring in films such as The Mad Bomber, Funny Lady, and Made to Order. With a career that spanned several decades, Hadley demonstrated a versatile acting range that appealed to a broad audience spectrum. His lasting legacy, marked by memorable roles and unwavering dedication to his craft, is cemented in the annals of television history. Hadley's significant influence in the drama genre, especially in soap operas, has left an enduring legacy that will undoubtedly inspire future actors for generations to come. Number 9. Carol Higgins Clark, a best-selling mystery author and esteemed actress, passed away at the age of 66 in Los Angeles on June 12 after bravely battling cancer of the appendix. Known for her exceptional storytelling skills, she often collaborated with her mother, the acclaimed writer Mary Higgins Clark. After receiving her BA from Mount Holyoke College, Carol further honed her skills at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. Her acting talents were showcased in several films including A Cry in the Night and at prestigious venues such as New York's Carnegie Hall. As an author, she penned over 15 books independently and several in collaboration with her mother. Her remarkable talent and vibrant spirit earned her numerous accolades, including the Distinguished Author Award from the University of Scranton in 2000, which she shared with her mother. A testament to her resilience was evident in 2006, when a plane crash into her apartment building didn't diminish her zest for life and humor. Besides her professional pursuits, Carol was deeply involved in philanthropic endeavors. She supported organizations such as Project Angel Food, Catholic Charities, and ACPMP, an Appendix Cancer Research Foundation. Her dedication to aiding others, giving back to her alma mater, and raising awareness about the disease she fought so courageously speaks volumes about her generous spirit and noble character. Number 8. Reggie Moore, a major force in Angolan basketball, tragically passed away in Luanda on June 12 at the age of 42. Moore's decision to take Angolan citizenship in 2013 was a testament to his love for the country where he had made his home since 2009. His contribution to Angolan basketball was monumental. An outstanding three-point shooter, he was key in guiding the national team to the Fibe Afro Basket Championship victory in 2013. Moore's formidable skills also shone in club basketball, where he represented distinguished teams such as Primero de Agosto, Petro de Luanda, Recreativo do Libolo, and Interclube. As part of the Petro de Luanda team, he was instrumental in winning the 2015 FIBA Africa Champions Cup, and he played a significant role in Angola's victory in the 2015 African Games in Brazzaville. Moore was not only known for his athletic prowess, but also for his character. He was a personification of respect, determination, and sacrifice, as underscored by the tribute from the Angolan Basketball Federation. He held his Angolan citizenship close to his heart, considering the country his home and establishing profound connections with its community. As the world pays tribute to his life and career, Reggie Moore's legacy remains indelible. His exceptional talent, sportsmanship, and unwavering commitment to his adopted country will forever be remembered. Number 7. Sir Ben Helfgott, the Holocaust survivor who represented Britain as an Olympic weightlifter, passed away at the age of 93 on June 16, 2023. Born in Poland in 1929, 
Helfgott was a young boy when his life was drastically altered by the Holocaust. Despite the unimaginable horrors he experienced, including surviving several concentration camps, Helfgott remained unbroken, exemplifying resilience and the strength of the human spirit. After the war, he found refuge in Britain, becoming one of the 735 children famously known as the Boys, who were brought to the UK by a Jewish organization. In his new home, Helfgott discovered a passion and talent for weightlifting. This led to a successful sports career that included winning a bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games in 1958 and representing Britain at the 1956 and 1960 Olympic Games. Off the lifting stage, Helfgott dedicated his life to ensuring the horrors of the Holocaust were never forgotten. He played a crucial role in Holocaust education and fostering Polish-Jewish reconciliation. His contributions were recognized with multiple honors, including an MBE, a Commander's Cross of the Order of Merit of Poland, and a knighthood. Sir Ben Helfgott's legacy is one of profound resilience and unwavering hope. His life, marked by unimaginable suffering and incredible triumph, will continue to inspire future generations. Number 6. Sadao Nakajima, a revered Japanese film director famed for his Yakuza-themed movies, died from pneumonia on June 11th at the age of 88. Nakajima began his illustrious career at Toei Company in 1959, where he was mentored by the likes of Tadashi Imai. He debuted as a director in 1964 with Kunoichi Ninpo, his career took off in 1966 when he was awarded the Directors Guild of Japan's Rookie Director Award for his Yakuza film 893 Gurentai, after which he transitioned into independent filmmaking. Nakajima's legacy is distinguished by his storytelling versatility. He not only excelled in Yakuza-themed films like Gokudo no Onatachi and Nihon no Don, but also showcased impressive talent in period dramas and literature-based films such as Kogarashi Monjiro and Jo no Mai. In addition to directing, Nakajima was a talented screenwriter, having crafted the scripts for films like Ningen Geki Jo and Yoshiwara Enjo. His contributions to Japanese cinema span various genres and periods, underscoring his undeniable influence as a storyteller and filmmaker. Nakajima leaves behind a rich tapestry of cinematic masterpieces. His storytelling prowess will continue to inspire filmmakers and audiences for generations to come. Number 5. Gordon McQueen, the legendary Scottish defender who was part of the 1970s Leeds team and also played for Manchester United, has passed away at 70 after a long fight against dementia. His outstanding career began at St. Mirren peaked in the iconic Leeds team of the mid-70s and culminated in an FA Cup win with Manchester United in 1983. McQueen was renowned not only for his sporting prowess, but also for his charisma and huge heart. The towering 6 f 3 in defender, capped 30 times for Scotland, was an imposing figure on the field. After his playing career, which ended in Hong Kong in 1986, McQueen transitioned into management and coaching roles at Airdrionians, St. Mirren, and Middlesbrough. In 2001, he moved into broadcasting, becoming a beloved pundit at Sky Sports. McQueen's health battles began in 2011 with a cancer diagnosis. He suffered a stroke in 2015 and was diagnosed with vascular dementia in 2021. McQueen's family believe his dementia was linked to repeatedly heading the ball during his career a risk they hope to highlight for current players. McQueen's family remembers him for the love, laughter, and bravery that characterized his life. He is survived by his wife Yvonne, three children, and three grandchildren. Number 4. Sir James Gilbert Hardy, an Australian winemaker, businessman, and esteemed yachtsman, has passed away. Born in 1932, he was a great-grandson of Thomas Hardy, the South Australian winemaker. Hardy followed his family tradition joining the family wine company Thomas Hardy & Sons in 1953. He worked his way up to chairman in 1981, leading through the merger into BRL Hardy Wine Company in 1992. A passionate yachtsman, Hardy competed in two Olympic Games, three America's Cup Challenges, and four Admiral's Cup Ocean Racing Championships. 
His contributions to sailing and the community earned him an OBE in the 1975 Birthday Honours and a knighthood by Queen Elizabeth II in the 1981 Birthday Honours. In 1994, Hardy was inducted into the America's Cup Hall of Fame. His service to the community extended beyond yachting. Hardy served on the Executive Committee of the Neurosurgical Research Foundation of South Australia for 25 years. He was chair of the federal government's Natural Heritage Trust Advisory Committee for eight years and served as chairman of the Landcare Foundation. Hardy married Anne Christine Jackson in 1956, with whom he had two sons. A dedicated Freemason, Hardy was initiated into the Lodge City of Sydney, number 952 in 1962 and later served as Deputy Grand Master. The Lodge Sir James Hardy, number 1046, was named in his honor. Number 3, Henry Petrosky, a renowned scholar and professor who interwove engineering, history and literature in a unique and distinguished career, passed away on June 14 at the age of 81. Known for his curiosity about the origins and designs of structures, Petrosky held a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Manhattan College and master's and doctoral degrees from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Alongside his technical studies, he nurtured his flair for writing, producing both poetry and essays. Petrosky's contributions to the field were remarkable. Joining Duke University as a professor in 1980, he bridged the gap between liberal arts and engineering and enriched both fields with his work. He authored 20 books which connected the realms of engineering with everyday objects like pencils and bridges. His philosophy that form follows failure posited that the best way for inventors and engineers to improve is by understanding and learning from past failures. His lucid and accessible explanations of complex engineering concepts endeared him to both peers and the public. In recognition of his pioneering work, Petrosky was appointed as a member of the U.S. Nuclear Waste Technical Review Board and held memberships and fellowships in numerous engineering societies. His accolades include the Ralph Coates Rowe Medal and the Civil Engineering History and Heritage Award. Petrosky's enduring legacy lies in his unique approach to scholarship, bringing the world of engineering closer to the public and inspiring generations to see the world through the lens of an engineer. Now, we also honor the lives and legacies of notable people who have died in the past few years. Number two, Frank Bonner, renowned for his beloved portrayal of Herb Tarlick, the amusingly crass sales manager on the CBS sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati, died on June 16, 2021, at the age of 79, due to complications from Lewy body dementia. Bonner's screen debut came in the 1967 cult film The Equinox, A Journey into the Supernatural. However, he truly found his niche with the character of Herb Tarlick, a figure often seen clad in polyester and plaid throughout four seasons and 88 episodes of WKRP in Cincinnati. He reprised this role in the new WKRP in Cincinnati from 1991 to 1993. In addition to his acting, Bonner was also a skilled television director. He directed episodes of various iconic TV shows, including Family Ties, Who's the Boss, and Saved by the Bell, The New Class. Notably, he directed 105 episodes of NBC's City Guys between 1997 and 2001. He is survived by his wife, four children, seven grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. Frank Bonner's legacy is rooted in his comedic brilliance and ability to captivate audiences through his unforgettable characters, most notably Herb Tarlek, and his considerable contributions as a TV director. His warmth both on and off the screen will be fondly remembered. Number 1. Charles Webb, the unconventional and critically acclaimed author of The Graduate, died on June 16, 2020, at the age of 81, due to a blood condition. Webb burst onto the literary scene when he published The Graduate in 1963, at the tender age of 24. The novel, a dry satirical critique deeply rooted in his own upbringing and college experience, 
skyrocketed to cultural significance when it was adapted into an Oscar-winning film in 1967, starring Dustin Hoffman and Anne Bancroft. Webb's writing skillfully critiqued materialism and societal expectations through his protagonist, Benjamin Braddock. The film, despite being set in an earlier period, came to symbolize the spirit of rebellion in the 1960s. The novel eventually sold over a million copies. However, Webb received only $20,000 for the film rights, and much of his work went unrecognized as the screenplay borrowed heavily from his book. In addition to The Graduate, Webb wrote several other novels, including Love, Roger and The Marriage of a Young Stockbroker. His novel New Cardiff was adapted into the 2003 film Hope Springs. In his personal life, Webb was something of an enigma, deliberately shunning material wealth. He refused an inheritance, gave away his royalties to charity, and lived a nomadic lifestyle with his wife, Eve Rudd, whom he had met during his college years. Charles Webb's legacy as a skillful storyteller and critic of social norms endures in both literary and cinematic history, and his unique brand of individualism continues to inspire. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.